presentation is just seeking to highlight some of the issues that are probably relevant to this session, which is taxing the digital economy, what does the future hold? Uh, it, it builds on a number of the earlier uh, presentations and comments that are made. Uh, as has been outlined, the current tax environment for the digital economy uh, is one of immense scrutiny. Uh, it's a major element of all economies, and uh, given the immense scrutiny, it's, it's clear that the current tax rules may not be adequate to uh, address the tax matters that arise in the digital economy. In particular, how activities, are carry, are t how activities carried on in a remote fashion are taxed, and uh, how indirect taxes on principally business to consumers are dealt with in, in particular areas are, are matters of concern. Sorry. Uh, so the future, what does the future hold? It's clear that there's going to be a change in the tax environment that applies to the digital economy going forward. Uh, at present, there's uncertainty as to the extent and impact of the change. As we've seen earlier, the BIPs project is ongoing, and it will be the end of next year before we have the final reports. And even then, it'll be a question of how those are going to be implemented. It, based on the comments that have been made so far, it looks as if new approaches will be taken, in particular in relation to taxing digital business in a number of areas. Uh, the, and these are likely to have an impact on how business may be undertaken in the digital economy. Clearly, the current environment we're dealing with is going to change. How that impacts and how people will actually engage in business is something that remains open. Uh, it looks as if there will be a potential for a higher tax burden. Uh, the reason for that is it's clear that some of the changes that are proposed will result in profits being allocated in different places, and thus higher tax rates may very, very well apply. In addition, as you've heard before, the key issue in relation to profits not being taxed is one which has been focused on, and that is likely going to increase the tax burden for some of the businesses in this space. In addition, some of the proposals, uh, as have been highlighted, will result in additional administration being undertaken by companies to provide additional uh, information to tax authorities so that they can fully consider the way businesses are structured. Um, the current rules that apply in, in international tax, which rely on the tax treaties based on the OECD model convention, typically do not result in tax being paid uh, where a person doesn't have a physical presence in the country in which they're dealing with. Uh, and thus, the current definition of PE, as has been outlined, may not be fully appropriate for the digital economy. It is possible for companies to seek to minimize the taxable presence in which they operate in, and the media focus that we've seen recently has tended to be on operations which have been structured to facilitate that. So very often you'll see comments being made of how particular businesses that have operations in Ireland uh, book most of their profits here, because very often the other markets they deal in, they do not have physical presences there, and under the terms of the double tax agreements, they're not liable to tax in those jurisdictions. In addition, a major part of the profit that now arises in the digital economy and in the wider economy relates to intellectual property. And intellectual property is, is an asset that can be moved. It doesn't necessarily have to be located in a particular jurisdiction. And by moving the intellectual property, people can seek to achieve a particular tax result. Uh, in addition, uh, as we've seen with the way uh, e-commerce has evolved, uh, there can be a difficulty in determining where people are actually uh, acquiring goods uh, and accordingly how value-added tax or general sales taxes have to be dealt with. Uh, an interesting comment from one of the reports that I'll be referring to later uh, on the digital economy notes that the digital co economy itself doesn't create unique BEPS uh, issues, but some of its features can exacerbate the, the BEPS uh, risks themselves. So of itself, the digital economy is not something that's of a direct focus for BEPS, but just the nature of some of the activities that are carried out means that some of the other matters that are a focus of BEPS uh, are of particular relevance to businesses in the digital economy. Uh, I think when we're looking at this particular space, it is worth noting, uh, and this has been referred to before, that a lot of the uh, structures that are in place have come about because of domestic tax rules in particular jurisdictions. Um, uh, and the, it is the case that most countries, if they have a domestic tax regime that will confer some benefit, are quite happy for that tax regime to be used. Uh, notwithstanding the impact it may have, have on other countries. And I think one of the interesting things in the whole BEPS project and the approach that's now been undertaken is that most countries, or 
all the countries that are partaking have, have had to come to the table uh, on the basis that they are all going to address particular issues in their own tax uh, regime and rules going forward. Uh, and it will be interesting to see when BEPS is adopted to what extent uh, the domestic rules in particular, tax in particular countries will end up being changed. Uh, so the BEPS, uh, as people will be aware, is the main driver to, to change in this particular area. Having said that, it is interesting again to note from uh, the document on the digital economy uh, the, the following comments, and that is that the, they, they do acknowledge that the ability to maintain some level of business connection with a country without being subject to tax on business profits earned from sources within that country is a result of particular policy choices reflected in domestic laws and relevant Dublin tax treaties and is not in, it, in and of itself a BEPS issue. So a lot of the structures that are subject to criticism at present don't derive from, from BEPS per se. It arises from the existing tax treaty and the domestic rules that are applied in a particular country. Um, it, the, and then in relation to a local subsidiary or a permit establishment that generates little profits, where these structures accurately reflect the functions performed in each jurisdiction, the mere fact that business functions needed to conduct business in a particular country may be more limited in one type of business than in another does not raise BEPS in and of itself. And, and the key message here is that even after BEPS is finished, it is still likely that for certain jurisdictions they may not uh, uh, be looking at a situation where there's a major amount of additional profit that will be allocated to those jurisdictions. Um, that the, the key issue that is still accepted is that there must be real economic activity carried out in the jurisdiction to justify profits being allocated there. So as people uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure are aware, BEPS action plan provides for 15 actions to be finalized in three phases. We've already had the first set of reports in 2014 another set due in 2015, and the final set in December 2015. These are some of the recommendations from the first set of reports. The, the key ones to the digital economy are uh, primarily to do with recommendations regarding design of domestic tax treaty measures to prevent abusive treaties, uh, changes in the transfer pricing rules in relation to intangibles, and changes to transfer pricing rules in relation to documentation requirements. Uh, the, the other uh, reports have some impact, but they're the main ones. In, in relation to 2015 reports, a number of these are additional reports on similar areas. Uh, again, the key again is to do with uh, permit establishment status and um, it, it also in relation to uh, the transfer pricing rules in relation to risks and capital and other high uh, risk transactions. And the final set of reports, again, focus in on transfer pricing rules to limit base erosion via interest deductions and other financial payments uh, and revision of existing criteria to counter harmful tax practices more effectively. So the initial action number one on BEPS was to uh, have a report carried out addressing the tax challenges of the digital economy. And as was mentioned, Mary was part of the panel that prepared that report. The conclusions of that report did not recommend a separate uh, digital economy tax regime. The expectation is that the digital economy is part of the normal uh, economic activities that are carried out and so should be taxed under the existing tax regime that would apply uh, to other activities. Uh, the report does acknowledge that uh, digital economy does not generate unique BEPS issues, but some of its key features exacerbate BEPS risks. Uh, and BEPS risk will be addressed in the context of the BEPS project itself. It notes the intention to restore taxing rights at the level of both market jurisdiction and the jurisdiction of the ultimate payment, uh, parent. It also identifies a number of specific issues that arise from the digital economy that warrant attention from a tax perspective. Uh, the key one is probably that core activities cannot inappropriately benefit from an exception to PE status or artificial arrangements in relation to sale of goods and services. Um, and this is, is a key issue that's likely to come up in the context of the digital economy where businesses that currently are able to successfully trade in other countries without having a taxable presence there, the expectation is that that uh, will change. Um, it also identifies the importance of intangibles, the use of data and the spread of global value chains and their impact on transfer pricing. Uh, possibly the, the possible need to adapt CFC rules for the digital economy. Uh, CFC rules, which are control foreign company rules, typically are applied at the jurisdiction of a parent entity to attribute back profits 
uh, which may be er earned elsewhere. So again, in relation to some of these proposals, they do come back to domestic rules in home country jurisdictions being uh, adopted or applied in order to bring about a particular tax res result. And finally, it's noted that uh, there can be particular issues to do with VAT in relation to uh, either end consumers or bodies that are exempt uh, where VAT is a cost, that there can be issues arise from the provision of services to such entities uh, in the digital economy space. So uh, the report also notes that there are broader tax challenges that need to be considered in a, in a wider forum. Issues related to the nexus, what, what should a company's connection to a particular country or market be? Uh, data, how should data be treated in the context of tax? Is, is the acquisition of data, should that be looked on as an activity even if it's not uh, subject to a payment? Uh, Characterisation of particular matters for direct tax purposes. Uh, that on business to consumer issues. And there's going to be a supplementary report due on these issues by December 2015. So the, the, uh, as I've indicated, the report suggests that taxation in the market jurisdiction should be restored by preventing treaty abuse and preventing uh, artificial avoidance of the PE status. Um, taxation in the ultimate uh, residence jurisdiction should be restored by strengthening CFC rules. Um, Market and residence taxation should be restored by neutralizing the effects of hybrids, mismatch arrangements, and by limit, limiting base erosion via interest deductions and other financial payments, and by countering harmful tax practices more effectively. And then seek to have transfer pricing outcomes in line with value creation. Um, as an overall summary, people can see that there's a focus here on uh, changing the permit establishment rules that are in the treaty so that they more effectively apply to the digital economy, uh, having a greater focus on transfer pricing to ensure that profits are correctly allocated, and finally then considering abuse of tax treaties um, to, to ensure that tax treaties cannot result in no tax arising in particular cir circumstances. In addition to the matters identified in the report in the digital economy, the other matters that are included in the BEPS reports, which may impact, are measures to counter harmful tax practices, tre tax treaty measures to prevent abuse of tax treaties. And as people may be aware, there's a proposal that a limitation of benefit laws similar to those used in most US treaties should be introduced into uh, the general OECD treaties. Um, changes to transfer pricing rules in relation to intangibles, in relation to documentation requirements. Again, as was noted earlier, in order to try and ensure that particular tax practices uh, are identified by tax authorities, there's proposals that there should be uh, uh, ongoing information provision to all jurisdictions that companies may be engaged in, um, in relation to transfer pricing, what the structures are, and what they actually do in the, those particular countries. And new rules to limit base erosion. That's new rules to, to deal with the allocation of profits away from particular jurisdictions. So the position going forward, which will be relevant to the digital economy, is that there are major changes on the way. So for existing businesses, it is likely that their tax profile will change uh, as and when these measures are adopted. Uh, based on the reports, we can see the direction things are moving in, but where we'll end up is not clear. Because again, as it's been indicated, while these measures may be adopted at OECD level, the question will then be how they'll be implemented in particular countries. The core challenge will be the resolution of how taxing rights are allocated to resident countries and source market countries. Uh, there's uncertainty in how profits related to intellectual property may be impacted. As it's been indicated, it's a very difficult area. Um, and how much profit should relate to intellectual property or some of the arrangements that are currently in place as to who carries risks, whether they're acceptable, is something that's still open to discussion and debate. And there's clearly going to be an increase in the administrative burden for businesses uh, in this space. Where are we going to end up? Uh, as I said, it's uncertain. The reports give a fairly good indication as to the direction we're going in. It's likely that resident countries will be allocated corporate taxing rights with source countries having a local taxable presence uh, recognized for certain core activities and for collecting VAT. Uh, it's not clear what the, the impact of the limitation of benefit clause will be. Um, like where people have encountered this dealing with the US, you tend to have to deal with the rules that are present in the US and whatever country you're dealing with. Here it's likely that you'll have to deal with uh, 
the particular provisions in the context of every country you deal with, where there may be different meanings attributed to matters such as active, active conduct of business uh, in order to determine whether you can avail of a treaty or not. As I say, the key will be how matters will be addressed by individual countries. What issues will arise for existing operators? Because as we've noted, we've been quite successful in the space. So for existing companies that are facing uh, these matters, uh, what issues arise? Well, there could be a possible requirement to alter existing arrangements to minimize the increased administrative or tax burden. The existing arrangements that people have put in place have been by reference to what the current rules are. Uh, to the extent the rules change, there, there are likely to be economic drivers as to why people might seek to change some of their arrangements. There may be tax and other costs associated with the alterations. So there may be direct tax where existing contractual arrangements have to be altered. Uh, there may be direct tax costs where operations need to be transferred. And there may be an impact um, on in-country operations that people actually have. People may actually uh, form a view as to whether they may actually want to increase the presence in a country or may actually want to reduce a presence in the country. Um, there will be a requirement for new systems to, uh, to address the increased administrative burden that uh, looks likely to arise. Um, what will be the impact of this in Ireland? Well, it's clear that there will be some impact because for some of the companies here, their, their tax profile is clearly going to change. Uh, as I say, the key is going to be on what will ultimately be agreed. Uh, as a small open economy, you wouldn't anticipate this having a major impact on the domestic base. However, for Irish companies that are looking to engage in international markets, these new rules and presence and requirements will increase both the administrative burden and also increase the likelihood that they'll end up with profits being taxed elsewhere. Uh, the, there uh, is quite likely to be an impact on the existing supply chains, the way people do business, uh, and an increase in administrative burden for both revenue and for business, because there's going to be a lot more information provided. In the context of Ireland, recent budget, we have had the Minister set out the roadmap, which is clearly showing, if you like, what Ireland itself expects to have on the table going forward, uh, that the, the, the key elements there were a reputation, the regime and rate, and as Mark has indicated, the fact that the rate is being uh, reaffirmed is something that's positive. Businesses don't like dealing with change. They like to have a, a certainty as to what the position is going forward. Uh, the proposed introduction of the knowledge box is likely to be key in, in relation to the offering that's going forward. Risks and concerns. Uh, there's a concern that the outcome of BEPS project may go further than address, addressing the issue of profit shifting and base erosion. Um, uh, as was mentioned earlier, uh, if one looks at uh, some of the other comments that have been made, the, the, the project is, uh, very often one gets the impression the project is not so much about addressing these particular issues as potentially uh, changing where people end up having to pay tax. Uh, so there's an acknowledgement in the papers that in the digital economy, IP can be responsible for most of the economic value created. And the, the whole issue as to how IP will be taxed going forward is, is, a, is a, an open issue, so it's a risk and concern for businesses. Uh, as has been flagged earlier, the whole issue as to how return on capital should be taxed and how it should be reflected in international oper operations is an issue that is still open and, and gives rise to risks and concerns. And there's going to be a, a major increase in the administrative burden to be carried out by existing uh, entities in relation to uh, information to be provided. But all of this is in the context of, uh, if you like, the same profit pool. So we have all these additional costs arising. It's the same profit pool. So in relation to the comment made earlier as to whether treasuries will be net beneficiaries under this, clearly there's going to be some losers uh, in the context of everything. Uh, so that's just to lead into our conversation. Thank you.